Hi, it's Katrina. Number nine, the ancient alien gods of Mesopotamia. From 4100 to 1750 BC, the great civilization of the Sumerians flourished in Mesopotamia. This was before the Greeks worshipped the gods of Olympus and before the Egyptians came up with their own powerful deities. The ancient Sumerians, along with the Akkadians, Assyrians, and Babylonians, worshipped the Anunnaki. You've undoubtedly heard of the Anunnaki before. Archaeologists and historians have been able to piece together that the Anunnaki were a group of deities perhaps similar to the pantheon of the Greeks, but more recently, people have started to say that these gods, worshipped by people so long ago, were actually aliens. To show ancient aliens, conspiracy theorists and astronaut theorists are very excited about the Anunnaki. Thanks to archaeological evidence in the form of old scripts, tablets, and temple art, we know the Sumerians worshipped the Anunnaki as heavenly deities. They were the children of An, the god of heaven, and Ki, the goddess of earth. It was their job to decide the fate of humanity. Funny enough, while we lump them all together, the ancient Mesopotamians did not ever represent them as a complete group in their sculptures. There is no surviving list of the names of all of the Anunnaki, but there were at least seven. Everybody picked one and followed and honored that one god, but there was no religious group or cult that followed all of the Anunnaki at the same time. In Mesopotamian lore, the Anunnaki were believed to be physically huge and hold extraordinary powers. After all, they were gods, and they had a glowing metal or light that made them shine. They were almost always shown wearing large horned caps covered with ox horns and clothing with elaborate gold and silver designs. These gods mixed with many others, such as Marduk, the national god of ancient Babylon and others mentioned in the Epic of Gilgamesh. Over the years, the various civilizations changed, and the Anunnaki morphed into different beings that did different things, such as forming an army led by Marduk or acting as judges for ancient heroes and gods. The Mesopotamians believed that a god's statue was the physical embodiment of the god themselves and had to be taken care of constantly. The gods had large boats and chariots which the people would bring out during religious processions, just like many cultures do today around the world from India to Spain. So where did the theory of these gods being aliens come from? In 1976, scholar Zechariah Sitchin published an alleged translation of 14 ancient clay tablets from the Sumerians. He turned the translations into a book, and in this book, he claimed that the Sumerians believed their gods weren't just heavenly beings, but actually came from a planet out in space called Nibiru. It evolved into an elaborate science fiction story where the aliens came and used humans to mine gold and created military bases and all kinds of other things. The problem is that the tablets were mistranslated, misconstrued, and everything was pretty much made up. However, the good news is that now many people love to hear about the Sumerians and the Akkadians and the Babylonians. The story has been carried on and changed and added to by other authors, and now the Anunnaki of today have morphed into something completely different than what ancient people could have ever imagined. Number 8. Where is Cleopatra's tomb? Many people are often surprised that we actually don't know where Cleopatra was buried. She is actually said to be buried with her lover Mark Antony when the Roman leader Octavian, later Caesar Augustus, defeated them but allowed them to be buried together. When the Romans were closing in and Antony committed suicide, Cleopatra tried one final military campaign but also ended her life strategically, disappearing from captivity and she made sure that her remains would never be found by the Romans or their descendants who hated her so much. It's hard to believe that two of the most famous historical figures lie somewhere lost in Alexandria, Egypt. Many archaeologists are still searching for Cleopatra, including Kathleen Martinez, who has spent the last 20 years of her life looking for her. Martinez believes that the ancient ruler didn't want her tomb to be found. She says that Cleopatra outsmarted everyone. She was highly educated and sophisticated, spoke nine languages, studied politics, economics, and mathematics. At 21, she was in the Sinai Desert, raising an army and plotting her return to the throne. Martinez and her team have been digging for years. 
she has found many exciting artifacts related to the famous queen, but Cleopatra made it hard for anyone to find her eternal resting place. Kathleen Martinez and her team have been on a roll in recent years. They discovered 16 tombs in Tap Osiris Magna, a very important site with temples dedicated to Osiris and Isis. Previously, archaeologists had found a hoard of coins decorated with Cleopatra's face, indicating that she also came to this place. It is also possible that she may even be buried here. Land-penetrating radar scans of the area found evidence of a network of corridors and tunnels, as well as three structures that could be mausoleums. The team has also discovered a tomb covered in gold leaf, which has apparently been undisturbed. That could be the ancient queen's final resting place. Besides the coins with Cleopatra's face and the tomb covered in gold, the excavation also unearthed a ceramic mask below the Isis sanctuary, which could be Mark Antony's death mask. The latest updates were December 2021, so after thousands of years, the discovery of Cleopatra's tomb might just be in sight. Number 7. The Great City of Teotihuacan The ancient city of Teotihuacan is one of the most mysterious and fascinating places in all of Mexico. It's also a huge tourist attraction and just 30 miles from Mexico City. But many people visiting the attraction don't realize who built it. People assume that Teotihuacan was built by the Aztecs, but this isn't actually the case. Teotihuacan, one of the first great cities built in the Americas, came at least 1,000 years before the Aztec. Not even they knew who built it when they discovered the site completely abandoned. Archaeologists know today, through countless excavations and investigations, that the city reached its height between the years 100 BC and 650 AD. It covered 8 square miles and had a population of around 100,000 people. According to George Cowgill, an archaeologist from Arizona State University, this was the largest city in the Western Hemisphere prior to the 1400s. It was filled with temples, comparable to Giza in Egypt, and had thousands of residential compounds. But nobody knows who built it. Some suggest the Toltec culture, but nobody's been able to prove it. What we do know is that it hosted several other cultures during its life. The Zapotec lived here for a while, the Mixtec, and even the Maya. But nobody knows where the original builders went, or why over 100,000 people seemingly vanished into thin air. Number 6. Learning How to Count One of the weirder mysteries that historians have looked at throughout the years involves counting. What we take as a simple act today wasn't always so easy. Sure, it may seem like people have always been able to count to 10 on their fingers, but just look at monkeys, they aren't exactly counting to a thousand. The big question is, when and how did humans learn how to count? Scientists believe it was about 60,000 years ago in Western France. Researchers discovered a chunk of hyena bone with nine notches cut parallel into it. The notches were made by a Neanderthal, who seems to have been trying to signify something. It's believed this was one of the very earliest efforts made by a hominin to count to 10. Archaeologists have found similar artifacts before, but the scratching on bone is almost always interpreted as artwork. Francesco De Rico from the University of Bordeaux believes this particular hyena bone shows numerical information. The sense of quantity is so much more complex than people think. There are almost no other animals on Earth able to actually understand how many of something there is. It's not just about counting, but about understanding. Some creatures, such as fish and bees, are able to instantly recognize quantities of up to four, but they have large quantity discrimination. It means they can't understand the difference between the two large groups, whether there are 10, 20, or 60 things. It's all just a lot. Hominins were the same way. But now it seems that both human beings and Neanderthals were each developing a sense of quantity at around the same time. But it wasn't until thousands of years later, until the year 3 BC, that the number zero would actually appear in Mesopotamia. Around 4 AD, the Maya also came up with the number zero. These concepts that we take for granted today were a huge part of our development as humans. Number 5. The Cult of Cthulhu If you've ever laid in bed at night and wondered if your dreams are going to be violated by the elder god known as Cthulhu, I'm here to help. 
Cthulhu was created by H.P. Lovecraft in the early 1900s as a cosmic beast in his fictional stories. In his stories, Lovecraft wrote of a secret book called the Necronomicon. The Necronomicon was said to be a powerful grimoire of spells and incantations. These spells gave one the ability to interact with the elder gods sleeping deep beneath the surface of the earth. These gods, and specifically Cthulhu, interacted with human beings by influencing their dreams and turning them insane. At this point, you're probably becoming aware that Cthulhu was never real. It wasn't even inspired by anything. Lovecraft made it up, but people really believed, and like the Anunnaki, it began a new following. People continue to think that the Necronomicon is a real book, and that Cthulhu is still waiting for his time to reclaim the Earth. For example, a man named Simon, a Slavonic Orthodox priest, walked into a witchcraft supply shop in New York in 1972 with a manuscript. He told the person behind the counter that the manuscript was about 700 years old. When the pair sat down to look at it, they saw the first word on the first page was Necronomicon. It almost looked like Simon had discovered an actual remaining copy of the legendary Book of Spells. But it wasn't real, it was just a fake. It was one of dozens of fake Necronomicon manuscripts that have surfaced since Lovecraft died in 1937. But for many, the dream is still out there, and the idea of something scary lurking in the shadows is part of us being human. Number 4. Lost Turkish Civilization In 1996, the German archaeologist Klaus Schmidt discovered megaliths arranged in what seemed to be a purposeful formation in Turkey. The megaliths turned out to be 11,000 years old, built by ancient people who had not yet developed tools able to fashion such structures. This place is called Gobekli Tepe, and it predates Stonehenge by 6,000 years. Schmidt spent the final 18 years of his life excavating it before dying of a heart attack in 2014. At that time, he estimated that only 5% of the mysterious site had been uncovered. Archaeologists around the world believe the actual city still remains hiding beneath the ground. This is arguably the biggest mystery in archaeology. The problem is that the construction of the megaliths doesn't make sense. The people who lived in this region were hunter-gatherers. They didn't have tools, they didn't live in settlements, and they were nomadic. This means that they didn't farm, and they didn't function as a society. They just kind of wandered around hunting big animals. So what caused this huge change? Was it another civilization? Another group of people? Like many of the bizarre mysteries I've told you about, many theories turn to aliens. Some believe Gobekli Tepe was the result of aliens influencing our ancestors and giving them the technology needed to begin civilization. That's because Gobekli Tepe really was the first major construction project by human hands. It was the beginning of everything, and it came out of literally nowhere. Number 3. The Valley of Lights P.C. Alan Godfrey went missing on November 29, 1980. The British police constable was investigating reports of cattle roaming into a rural estate when he witnessed what he described as a large object shaped like a dome in the sky. He claims he was blinded by a flash of light and regained consciousness 100 yards away from where he saw the mysterious object. 25 minutes were missing from his mind, as if he had blacked out for no reason at all. It only gets more mysterious from here. When Godfrey returned home, he noticed his foot was covered in itchy red marks like a burn. It was inexplicable. He sat down and started to think, and it occurred to him that he may have been kidnapped by extraterrestrials. He didn't understand what could have moved him that kind of distance while unconscious. Allen sought hypnotic regression specialist Harry Harris. In his sessions, he recalled that a beam of light blinded him and that he was transported inside a small room. He was then medically examined by small beings that he couldn't identify, as well as a single human man with a beard. This case has mystified alien believers for decades. But when Godfrey turned 70, he told the Huddersfield Daily Examiner that he really didn't know if he was truly abducted by aliens. He admitted that after all this time, it may have just been a dream. Number 2. Ancient Jar Burials Researchers on the island of Corsica, located in the Mediterranean, discovered people buried in giant jars. 
Researchers descended on the site in 2019 to start digging, at which point they found a necropolis dated back to the 3rd century AD. The necropolis contained at least 40 burials in an area of about 6,000 square feet. The truly strange part about the necropolis is that it boasted human bones inside amphorae or ancient jars. These jars were usually used to transport wine and olive oil. They weren't meant for people. Yet for some reason, on this island, people use them to bury the dead. Archaeologists have no idea why the ancient people who lived on the island were doing this. They know that the inhabitants, descendants of the Phoenicians who colonized the island in 1000 BC, imported the jars of wine from Carthage. That was in northern Africa. But they can't say why they decided to repurpose them as coffins. What we do know is that burying infants in jars dates back to the Bronze Age and didn't end until the 20th century, and yet nobody has ever been able to pinpoint any solid reason for it. Number 1. Strange West Virginia When the first European pioneers entered the land that would become West Virginia, they encountered things from a much earlier time. They came across strange artifacts, inexplicable carvings, creepy burial mounds, and the ruins of stone walls. While you might think this was just stuff left behind by the Native Americans, the natives of that time actually couldn't tell the pilgrims where much of it came from. Looking beyond the mounds and earthworks, which could easily be explained as the remnants of a lost society, explorers really found the petroglyphs most mysterious of all. Many of these petroglyphs, which were carved in rock and featured human and animal figures, were just bizarre. They were clearly communications of some kind, but nobody could figure out what the communications were trying to say. And even all these years later, archaeologists can only speculate. They may have been inspired by ritualistic activity. They may have just been expressions of what was going on in this unknown society at the time. There aren't many of these petroglyphs left. Most have been destroyed, some have been built over by new constructions, and others have been washed away when the settlers started damming up rivers. The most famous and most mysterious is the Half Moon Site, currently submerged in the Ohio River. It was surveyed in 1938 by James McBride. He discovered the figures represented in the rock as human forms, but not quite. These things were weird hybrids of humans and animals. Some believe they may have been drawings meant to depict curious extraterrestrial monsters that came down from space to visit the natives. We just don't know. Thanks for watching. Do you have any answers to these unsolved mysteries? Let me know in the comments below and remember to subscribe if you haven't already. See you soon.